just a few brief updates um, from us uh, as, a, as an organization and a team. Uh, so just to, just to start out with some broader organizational updates um, around some of the uh, bigger things that we've been working on. Um, we, we received $4 million um, from, the, from the stimulus uh, sort of money that, that Treasury was handing out uh, during the COVID period. So for the last year, we've been working on digitizing uh, but, you know, I mean, some of some of those numbers are there, just an astonishing amount of material in the collection. Uh, some of it hasn't been looked at for a long time because of the condition that it's in. Um, you know, whether it be fragile glass plates or, or acetate negatives that you know are, are fragile to handle, similar with the paper. Um, but what we've done is is cast a broad net um, to try and make it a, a diverse population of things that we're preserving there. Um, so we've got glass plates from the Maritime Services Board um, and from the Government Printing Office. You know, that's like 15,000 items from the Government Printing Office, um, insolvency files and school files, um, and then, and then five, you know, half a million acetate negatives, which come from State Rail, Maritime Services Board, Education, State Dockyards, Electricity Commission, Darling Harbour Authority and Urban Affairs. Um, you know, so we've been working with with external vendors and and our and our internal service providers at the GRR to get this material digitized and preserved. Um, and you know, we're looking at you know almost 400 terabytes of material at the end. Um, there'll be material that that will be you know subject to access directions um, available through our uh, you know digital digital delivery through um I guess through the through the through the customer uh, centered uh, portal uh, through the through the archives portal that's up. Um, so that's that's just a, an amazing piece of work and, and everyone's been working very, very hard on getting that material done, uh, capturing it all, making sure it's all catalogued and attached to the right thing so that it's it's easily searchable and discoverable. Um, so so that'll be, I mean, yeah, that, that's good, you know, and we, we do these activities every year, but this has just been a, a particular, a particular large scale effort. Um, and then sort of on to on a completely different track, uh, the, the right to annotate process. So this is something that uh, Christy Tiberi and her team have been working on um, for a while from uh, getting, a, getting a policy uh, approved by our board um, about the right, so, so, so right to annotate. So we've, um, we've, we've sort of limited this to, to care leaves and adopted persons for the minute, um, you know, to try and get the process right. And, uh, you know, before we expand it out to any other stakeholder groups, but what we're really aiming to do here is sort of close the gap between between the the legislative uh, doors that are open to uh, to amend or to annotate active records through something like PIPA um, versus when they come into the state archives and they're no longer active and um, there was there was no way for people to to make some of these annotations and similar policies exist in other jurisdictions um, across the globe and Australia uh, from our research they're not frequently used um, but when they are used they're you know generally very meaningful to the to the stakeholder group or to the particular person who's using them so um, so thanks to all of our thanks to all of our colleagues over at DCJ um, who really helped us uh, with that policy and getting all of the material ready um, to be some information on the website but uh, you know it's a it's a customer focused policy you know to try and make it um, as easy as possible for the impacted people to to provide the annotations that they need to um, and then on to the next slide. Um, so these will be some updates for the record keeping standards and advice team more specifically. Um, so we're all aware as the, as the clouds come overhead, uh, New South Wales flood disaster that everyone's been dealing with. Um, I guess state archives and records are lucky that we're not directly impacted. Um, so what we have been trying to do is turn our heads towards the, to any support that we can provide. So. For, for anyone who's here, um, if you if you haven't yet uh, come to us and 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 let us know that you've been impacted, please do. It's good for us to know what's going on throughout the state, but more importantly, it's good for us to be able to provide some advice about how to navigate the legislation. You know, when you when you're dealing with waterlogged records that are effectively destroyed, um, you know, where do you sit in terms of um, in terms of compliant disposal um, and that sort of thing. So we've got some advice and some tools that we can provide. Um, around uh, what you can do in each circumstance. Um, certainly we've had people come to us and they're not sure whether, you know, where they're sitting in a disposal sense, um, either because the material's not catalogued correctly or, or because it's sort of in this in this weird gray area in terms of damage, you know, is it worth saving or not? Um, and, and the team's been doing a good job 
helping people to navigate um, some of those questions and, and sort of document them and, and you know, get those decisions made within their own organization. Um, and as a part of that, we've been sort of reviewing, um, I guess, you know, the, the, the public facing uh, advice that we have in that space. So that should be quite clear if, if this does happen outside of the flooding that we've had over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, what, what people's options are. So if you've got any questions, please reach out. Um, we've got some new guidance that we've been putting out. Uh, you'll notice a theme that uh, most of it's about um, risk. So, you know, that's um, something that we're trying to uh, do better at is to provide some information about obviously no, nobody's circumstances are the same. Um, you know, so how do you have these conversations about, you know, what does records management mean and, and how do you do it in a risk? You know, how, how do you achieve compliance in a, in a risk appropriate way? Uh, so, there's, so there's some more tools and guidance and we'll provide the links to that um, after the meeting. Thanks. Um, and then I noticed someone put a comment in here. Uh, so this, this will be news to everyone here, I think, um, but we're ceasing our work, work is a generous term, on keyword AAA and keyword for councils. Um, so the, the product which many people here will have heard of or at least used, um, hasn't been developed or touched or improved in, in about 20 years. Um, so it's been, you know, a long time coming. It's been very static, but it's it's not something, A, it's not something that, um, you know, is, is really uh, appropriate to use without some amendment. You know, it's not, it's not current, uh, but also we're not in the business of maintaining these tools and then selling them as we once were. So we've decided to uh, close Close the program, but we're leaving the material um, available under a Creative Commons license. So if you're using it, you can continue to use it. Um, there's just li some limitations around anyone who wants to take it, develop it further, and then potentially sell it themselves. Um, but there's, there'll be more. There's some information loaded on the website there, um, and we'll be in communication with everybody who does have an agreement, have a license with us about the status of that license and, and some of the options that we have. Um, but the core is, if you're using it, just continue to use it. Um, so we've also got some webinar series coming up um, about information and data risks uh, in a similar way to the theme of the guidance that we were producing. Um, so basically just stay alert for those. Um, please come in, ask questions. And if you've got ideas for future webinars, um, we're always open to that. Um, and then just a little update on the building the archives policy. So. So we've started a project to review this policy. It's 20 years old now, although it has had some minor reviews uh, over the last 20 years, but this is effectively the, the macro appraisal um, policy that we hold for building the New South Wales State Archives. Uh, it goes right through the fundamentals of, you know, the, the responsibilities for appraisal and, and how the disposal decisions work through the board. And then it has some very high level principles about you know what are the what what should the archives achieve in terms of what it documents and saves um so just as an fyi we've started that there'll be some consultation coming out uh, over the course of the next uh, six months or so um you know uh, obviously we're managing uh, throwing back to adam's presentation earlier you know we're sort of managing you know what this policy looks like and who it sits with uh, when we're staring down the barrel of these legislative changes, um, you know, around around potentially having two two different organisations, one that's managing the appraisal and the, the standards and the appraisal decisions, and then the other one that's actually responsible for taking the material in and preserving it. Uh, so I'm just looking at the time. It is right on 12:30. Um, so thank you, Stephen. Um, so if you've got any questions, comments or advice, there's some contact details there. Um, it looks like we'll be sending out a bunch of stuff after the meeting in terms of slides, uh, answers to questions that we didn't get to and links to material. Um, but I just really want to thank everybody for their time today and coming along. Um, you know, I want to thank all of the speakers uh, for, for the excellent um, presentations that you did today. Thank everybody here for the conversation. Um, it's always stimulating. Um, so look out for the comms coming up over the next month and please, if you're unsure about anything or if you've got any ideas, get in touch with the team, whether it's related to RMAT, 
or, you know, the monitoring exercise, transfer, whatever it is, please talk to us because we're more than happy to talk to you. So thanks everybody. I'll close the meeting there. Um, have a wonderful day. Thanks guys.